I'm Janet Wright. I am delighted to join you, although I will say uh, my heart is in California. I wish I were there in person and, and had a chance to meet so many of you that I have heard about for years uh, and don't know and renew friendships with uh, a few of you that I uh, have had the pleasure to meet. So uh, let me thank uh, Hattie and the organizers for this meeting for the chance to share with you some progress about Million Hearts and um, some perspective I developed when looking at uh, the agenda that's before you today. Um, I do hope that the Secretary's video came across. Um, let me please say that I, I carry to you her best wishes for continued success uh, in the Right Care Initiative, uh, as I think she stated in the video. So, um, if I could move to my first slide. Oh, there we go. So, um, today, um, what I'd like to go over with you um, is an exercise that I uh, conducted in preparing for this meeting. I think my own frustration and disappointment about not being there in person, I poured over your agenda. And I used it really as a test to see if we in Million Hearts are approaching the challenge of preventing a million heart attacks and strokes in a rational way, in a way that is action-oriented and will get the job done. And I mapped your agenda to our action framework uh, to see how closely aligned we were. And I found it dramatically uh, and tightly aligned. So I'd like to walk through that as both a way to introduce you to the way Million Hearts is thinking, but to also look for opportunities where Million Hearts can assist you and we can really, through cross-pollination, uh, get this job done. Um, I don't have disclosures, although this one always makes me think that no one wants to own me. <laughs> no one wants to claim me. So I, I hope that's not the way uh, you interpret it. Um, quickly, you, you possibly are familiar that uh, this is the Million Hearts goal. It is to prevent a million heart attacks and strokes by 2017. The time frame, and we are counting, is between January 1 of 2012 and December 31st of 2016. The initiative is co-led by CDC and CMS, but really executed by a series, a complement, a, a beautiful uh, set of partners at the federal, state, and in the private sector. Um, you know why we're tackling, why we, the federal government, would tackle a, a single condition and why you are working so hard in California. It's because we are underperforming in those areas uh, where the science is pretty darn clear and even medications are available, and many lifestyle uh, uh, modifications are available to get to better levels at the population than this. Um, I'm not going to spend time on those because you've been living in them and you've set your goals in California. So I will share with you the basic framework for Million Hearts. We are tackling this challenge along public health actions and healthcare directed actions. On the right, in terms of keeping us healthy and changing the context, the very focal works in work in Million Hearts is directed toward policies that improve our exposure to smoke-free air, work, a voluntary work with the food companies to increase the supply of lower sodium food choices, and to eliminate trans fat in the food supply. Over on the clinical side, we're really driving, we're working with others to drive excellence in the ABCS. We believe we can do that when practices, individuals, and systems can make the ABCS performance a priority, use health IT and other tools to support a systematic delivery of care, and then we take advantage of all the new care models that are being launched now, making sure the ABCs get embedded in those sets and make sure that the team members who are so effective in that uh, care delivery are uh, equally supported in the models. And as you see, the bridge between the healthcare and public health world shows our prioritization, if you will, our focus on reducing the well-known cardiovascular health uh, disparities. Okay, so uh, you'll see in the pre-initiative estimate column those numbers I showed on the previous slide. Uh, those were numbers back from 2011. Uh, you'll see in the column 2017 target where we're headed, and for some of those uh, intervention areas, it's an enormous leap in a short period of time. We are, uh, because the targets for 2017 are at the population level, we know that 
individuals that are in healthcare systems and have uh, healthcare professional relationships, we need to hold those health systems to higher target in order to pull the population levels up to 65%. I will move quickly by this, but as you may know, we have targeted blood pressure control first. We think the science is pretty clear there. There are large numbers of people who are impacted by uncontrolled hypertension. More than half the hypertensive population are still uncontrolled. Um, and so that has been our interest. We are turning at the end of this year and beginning next toward better detection efforts in addition to better control. So this is sort of the behind the curtains that I would share with you. We, this is our action framework. Um, this framework obviously does not say what specific actions are being undertaken, but we think that specific actions in each of these categories listed here will get us uh, to goal and beyond. I will go over these sort of one at a time. The first, in terms of translating and diffusing knowledge, we break that down into developing and disseminating messages. This is all at the public level, at the provider or professional and system level. Identifying and spreading best practices, and then that key element of translating science into practice. Uh, again, this is just with a perusal of the agenda ahead. Um, and I don't know the content of all the meetings that will be going on there today, but I would say that the entire summit and the University of Best Practices that you all have uh, developed and are uh, nurturing really fill this space in a beautiful way, a beautiful place for us to understand what each of us is doing and to really stand on each other's shoulders to make progress in a short period of time. There are a few things that Million Hearts is doing, just to give you some examples here. We are publishing um, on specific tools that we think will contribute to implementation of best practices. These fill that middle layer between what the evidence and the guidelines say and how actually to conduct them at the point of care. These are some other documents. We have a webinar series and our featuring um, our partners on that webinar series would really love to uh, broaden that out into others uh, there in the state of California who are doing great work. We'd love to feature you. And then uh, finally, um, we publish every other month an e-update, and uh, I'd love for all of you to sign up for that. You can find it at our website. Within that uh, publication every other month, we include uh, news from the community, tools you can use, and try to feature great work that's going on around the country. So in terms of creating and aligning incentives, uh, we again see this in three buckets. They're listed here. Uh, really using the recognition tool for high performers. Um, we all are a bit competitive and we, we like to know how we're doing. Uh, we also can glean then uh, those best practices from high performers. A lot of work is going on to change models of care so that we're actually paying for uh, performance and paying for outcomes. And then a tremendous amount of work to reduce the hassle factor, whether that's in working with your electronic health record or in any of the other uh, dramatic hassles in everyday uh, practice. Um, these are just two examples gleaned from your uh, agenda. Again, your medical uh, group and health plan awards of today. And then this roundtable occurring in the afternoon, which I nicknamed your action squad because I, I think pulling all the expertise in the room together uh, and pulling payers and big health systems for a conversation is exactly where action will take place. So the work that uh, we're doing, this is a guest subset around incentives, the PQRS program, the EHR incentive program, also known as Meaningful Use, and the value-based payment modifier are all CMS incentive alignment activities. Out of the Innovation Center where Million Hearts uh, sits, uh, there's a new comprehensive primary care initiative in seven markets around the country. State innovation models are active now in 25 states. And as you know, uh, a large number of accountable care organizations up and running where the payment model uh, is quite different uh, than our previous uh, fee-for-service model. The hypertension control champions, we recognized two back in 2012. One was Kaiser, Colorado, and the other was Ellsworth, Wisconsin. Both had achieved uh, hypertension control rates above uh, 75 percent, in fact, above 80 percent. Um, this year, we're uh, again recognizing uh, champions around the country. 
And um, the uh, winners, or the uh, yes, the winners of this uh, control challenge will be announced in uh, mid-December. And we believe that this will be um, an ongoing effort, so we can look to 2014 for even a bigger uh, splash about recognizing those who get excellence in hypertension control. In activating stakeholders, the meaningful partnerships which you have, of course, across the room today and beyond that room. We've seen uh, plans occurring at the state and local level, bringing public health and health care together, activating people around a specific plan, and then facilitating uh, the collaborations uh, across stakeholders. Again, your section today uh, that, I, that I really wish I could be a part of is the one about engaging patients and families. Um, I'm very excited to hear what you all learn, what you share from that. But today, you're obviously the example of statewide uh, collaborations. Um, we are fortunate to have public sector partners. Um, this is beyond the Department of Health and Human Services, as you see with EPA and the VA. Um, but we are uh, so delighted to have very specific and impactful actions coming out of all of these agencies. Um, this is a subset of the private sector, and uh, all are activated uh, one way or another, as is most meaningful for them. Um, a, a specific activity within stakeholder activation for us is a program called 100 Congregations for a Million Hearts. This is already active in San Diego. Um, we're asking congregations of faith-based organizations to designate a million hearts advocate and then do one or more of the following things on the slide. Um, we've been really surprised, um, but it, as you know, many uh, faith-based organizations have developed health ministries and they're looking for uh, content and uh, direction about how they can have the greatest impact. So although this advocate was originally uh, thought of as someone who could take our messages to the organization, what we're learning is it's more of a conduit back to us to help us understand what would be of most value. In terms of measuring and reporting systematically, very challenge, and I'm so in awe of what you have done to date in California and what you're planning to do in the future. You see the four elements that we think roll up into this action, and today, you, you know, you're the... Uh, you're the uh, advanced student in this. You've already chosen your metrics long ago, and you'll and, and Dr. Sportel will be delivering a progress report a little bit later this morning. And I'm really intrigued about the predictive modeling sessions that you're having uh, later this afternoon with uh, Archimedes. So uh, on our side, uh, we've we've continued to sort of get the updraft of the department and CMS's efforts to liberate uh, data so that it is of greater use and more timely for your purposes. We've just launched something this last week called an EPI exchange. That's the uh, data folks from CDC and from CMS meeting and looking at the Part D data to see what lessons are there, what can we learn uh, to improve medical uh, medication adherence, particularly around hypertension, but we will uh, roll in the other uh, ABCs at a subsequent date. Really exciting collaboration going on there. And then multiple alignment of measures across public and private programs. This is uh, where we started in January 11th. It is, I hope there, I, I know in fact that there are measure gurus in your audience, um, but just across the top you see the clinical quality measures, the ABCS, uh, those are their numbers that in the PQRS system and in the NQF system. Um, that's what was present in the meaningful use regs at I'm in January 11. The next column is the uh, Health Resources and Services Administration Uniform Data System collection process. Then for the VA, then a couple of the PQRS programs, and the CMMI Conference of Primary Care and ACO. So that's where we started January 2011. And here's an update as of July 2013. I want to be clear, this is not Million Hearts work, but this is tremendous alignment of measures all across uh, these federal uh, programs. And there is additional alignment uh, into the AHA's program, again with the guidelines, guideline advantage, and ACC's pinnacle. So I think this is good progress. Innovating and implementing for population health. I think this is really a roll-up or a wrap of a lot of the other activities. These four things are our strategies. And down below, these are things I plucked out of your agenda. This session on trend, I can't say it, trend-bending stroke care. 
and the pharmacist role uh, that you'll be discussing today, and then the afternoon session really describing the new technologies that are available. Really <coughs> strong drivers of population health. And for me, as a clinical doctor who took care of one person at a time, I'm trying to grow my population health cred. So I appreciate seeing what you all are doing uh, in that regard. Here's what we're doing. Um, we're working with the uh, Office of the National Coordinator to develop clinical decision support, which would be available in EHRs um, for smoking cessation and blood pressure control. Those are our first top two priorities. There's CDC funding at the state and community level directed at higher performance in the ABCs, really assisting from the community side the healthcare efforts in those communities. And then a new set of healthcare innovation awards that have uh, recently come out of CMMI. I will spend a moment on an adopt a protocol project, um, and this has uh, been near and dear to my heart. In listening to people across the country, I ask the question um, Do you have a protocol? Do you have a way of treating hypertension? And of course, everyone who treats it has a way but it is often that individual's way, and not necessarily one that uh, a, a, another team member could step in and take over if that uh, healthcare professional stepped away. We know that protocols work in other conditions, and in listening to many high performers uh, that we've been privileged to come to know, most of them adopt a protocol. So, um, the Million Hearts team has um, worked with other organizations where we will be posting uh, later in November four protocols that are currently in use around the country for hypertension control, as well as a customizable template so that individuals or systems or practices that want, want to develop their own um, can do so according to principles that will ensure their success. So we're very excited about uh, driving and with our partners driving the adoption and use of protocols for hypertension control. And closing up here on research, uh, really uh, among the other uh, roles that many of you play with deeply embedded in research, today I believe you are contributing to clarifying the questions and gathering the right forces to identify and close the gaps in research around what works and why. Um, our efforts, we're really excited about working with Corey, particularly in the area of health disparities, to identify what gaps there are in comparative effectiveness research. NHLDI and NINDS, where I'm privileged to sit at this moment, um, are deeply committed uh, to really informing, uh, informing uh, us all and accelerating our progress toward better cardiovascular health, uh, as is ARC and others. So, um, I will end today by asking questions, as any good researcher or uh, scientist might do, is what will it take for us to go the next level? The results that you all have achieved in California are stunning. I know that you are continuing uh, the pressure for performance uh, on yourselves. Um, I would ask that how can the things that you summarize today, how can those best be captured and spread? Secondly, what actions can we all do to accelerate progress in stroke prevention in California and beyond the state's borders? What can we stop doing today or start doing more systematically tomorrow? And then finally, and I mean this sincerely, how can Million Hearts help you succeed? Thank you very much, and I appreciate so much the opportunity to join you.